So let's talk more about the emperor's nationalities. In addition to Han, there are another twelve nationalities. There are Di, Xiongnu, Jie, Xianbei, Gogorio, Qiang, Shato, Kitan, Zhejiang, Tongut, Mongols, and Manchu. If we use a red dot to represent a Chinese emperor, we can see the ethnic distribution of them. Of course, the Han emperors did their part, and the number reached two hundred fifteen. However, similar to surnames, other ancient imperial nations either withdrew from China or merged into Han or other nations, and they finally disappeared. In Chinese history, here we use a smaller white dot to represent one hundred thousand people. Such a grid is nearly equivalent to the British population. By comparing the population of Chinese ethnic groups in twenty eighteen, only three of them can be followed. The Qiang people is only about three hundred thousand. The Mongols in the Yuan Dynasty and Manchus in the Qing Dynasty still have millions of people. But compared with the vast ten people today, they can only be cited as a drop in the ocean. Therefore, we objectively call them ethnic minorities here. These nine Han emperors, especially the founding fathers. Are brave and good at fighting, and their writing skills are first rate, which stems from their way of life, nomadism. However, most of them are called the barbarian by the Han emperors. In their eyes, these rude people are always only worthy of being knights rather than kings. But in the eyes of the world today, many nine Han emperors are even more famous. Genghis Khan once established the huge Mongol Empire, and his grandson, who be like Khan, built the capital of the Yuan Dynasty, Beijing, which set the base of its political position as the capital of modern China. In addition, Kangxi, Yongzheng, and Qianlong, three Manchus, brought feudal China to its final climax. After Beijing becoming the capital. Many later emperors were born there since then. So, where are the emperors of China born?